Well, hi there, and welcome back to Mo's Garage. After a little two and a half month hiatus, where my lovely wife and I decided to escape to the cooler weathers of the Pacific Northwest, we are now back in Mo's Garage and uh, back ready to work on the 1970 MGB GT. More specifically, uh, installing this uh, factory wiring harness that was actually uh, made um, in England. So uh, my wife and I had a a little fun yesterday, um, trying to get all these cables through a hole in the firewall over there. You can tell where it's coming from. So um, it was a lot of fun little cables. And then as you can see inside, the rest of the cables are, oops, squeaky door, are sitting here. Um, and basically I'm gonna have to remove kind of the quasi non-standard wiring harness that wasn't done very well. Uh, take the dash off and basically figure out how it all works. Now, holy cow, you look at these things and there are cables of all different shapes, sizes, colors, plugs. Some are obvious, some are not obvious. It's going to be quite the uh, investigative process to try to figure out what all this stuff plugs into. Uh, I mean, the obvious stuff, for example, is this stuff up front that's obviously somewhat headlight related. I'm assuming that's pretty much where it terminates. Um, there is definitely something that looks like a plug for an alternator. So, um, but past that, there's a lot of cables on this thing. And so we'll see if the wiring diagram is any good. So anyway, so that's kind of the quick intro. Um, and so we will start uh, trying to figure out what goes where. Good deal. Awesome. Well, I think first thing what we're going to attempt to do is figure out where to start this thing. And my thoughts are, let's start at the extremities. So we know that, for example, this right here, is the headlights, right? So that's a given. And we obviously have similar bits and pieces on each side. So kind of first step, in my opinion, let's just get the, get the harnesses into the headlight areas and then go from there. So um, step number one, um, I took a clear plastic cover that was on here, similar to what's on the other side, um, so we can get to it. And I'm gonna try to pop off the bezel here using half of a, um, um, half of a clothespin. I'm not sure if that makes a whole lot of difference, but we'll there it goes. I guess that did make a whole lot of difference, that bracket right there. Okay, so we got the ring off. Um, I'm gonna take the headlight out just to get it um, out of the way. We put this in the back. And you can see the headlight is let's see, held in place by some few screws. This is for the adjustment. So it looks like to take this whole assembly out. Um, we're gonna have to remove all this stuff around here. So, okay, well, we will do that next so we can expose the wiring. And we'll go from there. Okay, good deal, awesome. Okay, so we'll take a few screws out of the way and that way we can get the headlights off. So I believe these are the screws here. Um, could be wrong. I know that I could be wrong because I actually started using these screws here, which are actually the screws that control the angle of the headlights. So too funny. So, That looks like it's right screw, because now the headlight's moving. This bezel's gonna come off. Last but not least, she's at the bottom here somewhere. There it is. And what not. As the French say, Not quite, voila. A few more. Now we got it. Okay. Sweet. Got that. We got this. Take that out. We will grab our friend here, put him also in the back of the car. That way we don't lose it. 
Also, um, in looking at this, I'm pretty certain I'm going to most likely run that through the polishing machine and get some of the surface corrosion off of it, make it look nice. So, now the question is, is what's going on with the wiring, right? So the wiring is coming to here. This is the plug, but unfortunately, this is where it kind of melds with that, what I would consider substandard job for um, for the wiring heart. So the issue then becomes is that looks like there is some plugs that somehow need to make it. So if I start looking at um, what's at the end over here, you will notice that there's quite a few different plugs that are on here. But uh, it's not going to be readily obvious which one's which and where they go. And it looks like it's most likely some kind of a deal where the plug was supposed to have come out of the, the headlight um, and then come into here somewhere. So very interesting. I mean, it's the same thing with this. This is the other end of it, right? Over here, so you can see. So anyhow, so we uh, are going to have to do a little look-see on that one. So because things are not matching up. There's uh, just this um, kind of a loom that's coming out of the headlight itself. So, okay, well, time to do a little investigation. So after doing a little bit of research, I found out that these wires right here are actually, they are for the headlights and the side lights, but there's actually a separate set of wires that goes from here to the wiring harness. So um, these have been kind of tied into that other wiring harness, the same as the basically the side lights and the, the turn signal lights. Um, so I can actually buy this cable uh, from Moss or was kind of a brand new for about eight bucks, but to replace the cables on the both the uh, side lights and the turn signals, you have to buy the whole assembly at the $65. Um, I don't think so. So I'm just gonna make some uh, new wires and put some bullet ends on them to call them good. Uh, the good news is I did find out what these guys are. So this is basically um, going to the fuse box. So um, I have the wiring diagram for the MG BGT for this year. So basically it's just kind of tab eight, slot B, and I'm gonna hook those up next. So good deal. Well, picking up where we left off. So I did look at the wiring diagram and I basically have the OEM fuse block kind of wired in. So that was pretty obvious what went where. Um, I temporarily have the um, ignition coil set, but I suspect I need to flip it around. Most of the pictures I've seen has this upside down. Um, a couple of the wires are pretty obvious. The one in the back goes towards basically the brake switch, uh, the brake switch light and a couple other things. Uh, that wire obviously goes beneath the tunnel. Um, so, so far, I'm kind of getting it sorted out. Uh, there's a bunch of wires right here that I have no clue where they go to yet. So we'll have to figure that one out. So um, inside the car, I was a little busy, did not really film this. That's little cramped quarters. And ultimately, who wants to film wire being ripped out? But as you can see, the dash is out. Um, I have the wiring harness kind of where it's supposed to go. So um, just uh, everything is hopefully ready to start hooking the stuff up. Um, unfortunately, somebody put a brand new switch for the turn signal, um, but they took out all the ends and there's actually a plug that came with a new wiring harness. That's pretty nice. We'll have to figure out what to do with that. So walk over to here. Um, we see that the dash is out. So um, not too bad. It was kind of weird on the tack. Um, somebody decided to JB weld the light bulb in place. Oh my, what a hassle well, that was to get sorted out. So um, the uh, what's left of the wiring harness right now is sitting on my workbench. It's a bit of a rat's nest, as you can tell. But uh, anyway, that's okay. So good news, uh, it's out. Bad news, I have to order some more bits and pieces to get it to, before I can put the um, dash back in the car. I was missing some pieces for the heater. Um, and um, so unfortunately, I really, if I'm smart, I'd get all the heater components um, and the fan and et cetera, et cetera, hooked up 
while the dash is out. So, um, so I'm gonna have to wait on that. In the meantime, I have been kind of working on the engine and transmission, trying to get it ready to get back into the car. On the transmission side, um, I replaced the speedometer attachment. So this was kind of um, garbage in the previous one. And then I also replaced the rubber boot that goes on the clutch. Uh, really nothing too exciting to talk about. Over here, every, everywhere you see that there's bare metal is basically the previous owner decided to paint over dirt. Um, we, I actually, this was kind of filled as dirt, incredible, go figure. So we'll see. There's something weird going on over here. I need to double check what, what's going on with that. This is below the distributor. This is where the distributor goes. So um, we'll have to figure that out. So um, before I put the distributor on there, I wanna, first of all, I wanna paint everything around it and then we'll see. Um, I did uh, take the spark plugs out. Um, good news, everything seems to spin freely. And I also spent some quality time trying to clean up the um, thermostat housing. So we'll see on that. Um, on this side, uh, not really certain what I'm going to do. I think I might pop these two covers off, um, sandblast them and paint them a different color. Um, there's still a little bit, you can tell in some of these areas, again, that they've painted over some stuff that maybe they should have. This doesn't quite look as bad, but I, I quite frankly haven't spent a whole lot of time on this side either. Um, we be, will be putting new engine mounts on here once I get those painted. And I actually have a new um, kind of a wire over here to also uh, once we get that thing painted. Um, I did order some stud removers. So I'm gonna basically be removing these studs, cleaning them up, putting them back in. The same thing was on the water pump. And uh, that is kind of about it for the time being. Um, I am limited a little bit on the fact that I said I am waiting on a few parts to show up which is kind of crazy when you look at just the sheer number of parts I still have on the shelf, ready to go in. Um, right here, we have all the store-bought stuff. Up on top, there's a lot of pieces that I've uh, rehabbed and painted, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Um, one thing um, I think I might do is the actual console piece that is here. This is where you know you put the radio, etc. They want some ridiculous amount of money for a leather version, like a little pleather cover that goes over the top of that. I'm thinking I'm just going to paint it and hopefully match this. Just kind of just look the metal metal look. And that might not look bad. So that's kind of a thought I have. Um, you know, the car is going to look quasi race car-ish, especially since it still has the the uh, plexiglass rear windshield, etc. So maybe that might not be bad. So anyhow, so I think I'm going to end it right now. Um, and then next time we'll get going, we'll see exactly what... Um, bits and pieces I have to work on. So really my next thoughts at this point in time is really let's get the engine cleaned up, get it put back in the car. One thing I did forget to mention is that I did order some POR15. That is a MGB, um, I don't know what color you'd call that, purple, magenta, I'm not sure. Um, so uh, good news, I have a bad news. I didn't realize that you require like a bare metal prep uh, before you can paint it on bare metal. So I just did go on Amazon and order that. So um, yeah, so that's it. So anyway, um, hopefully you like this little video. Uh, if you do like, please uh, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and we will see you on the next episode. Take care guys. Awesome, bye. If you like this video, hit subscribe and give us a big like down below. Thanks for watching.